Knowing the truth is filthy, but when it is shallow, did the discerning one go unwillingly into its waters? Verily, there are chaste ones from their very nature, they are gentler of heart, and laugh better and oftener than you. They laugh also at chastity, and ask, and quot, what is chastity? Is chastity not folly? But the folly came unto us, and not we unto it. We offered that guest harbor and heart. Now it dwelleth with us let it stay as long as it will. And quot. Thus spake Zarathustra. 14. The Friend. And quot. One is always too many about me and quot. Thinketh the anchorite, and quad, always once one that maketh two in the long run. And quad, I and me are always too earnestly in conversation. How could it be endured, if there were not a friend? The friend of the anchorite is always the third one, the third one is the cork which preventeth the conversation of the two sinking into the depth. Ah, there are too many depths for all anchorites. Therefore, do they long so much for a friend and for his elevation. Our faith in others betrayeth wherein we would fain have faith in ourselves our longing for a friend is our betrayer. And am, lt, an am, gt, 8. Thus spake Zarathustra. And often with our love we want merely to overly envy. And often we attack and make ourselves enemies, to conceal that we are vulnerable. And quad, be at least mine enemy. And quad, thus speaketh the true reverence, which doth not venture to solicit friendship. If one would have a friend, then must one also be willing to wage war for him, and in order to wage war, one must be capable of being an enemy. One ought still to honor the enemy in one's friend. Canst thou go nigh unto thy friend, and not go over to him? In one's friend one shall have one's best enemy. Thou shalt be closest unto him with thy heart when thou withstandest him. Thou wouldst wear no raiment before thy friend. It is in honor of thy friend that thou showest thyself to him as thou art. But he wisheth thee to the devil on that account. He who maketh no secret of himself shocketh, so much. Reason have ye to fear nakedness. I, if ye were gods, ye could then be ashamed of clothing. Thou canst not adorn thyself fine enough for thy friend, for thou shalt be unto him an arrow and a longing for the Superman. Sawest thou ever thy friend asleep to know how he looketh? What is usually the countenance of thy friend? It is thine own countenance, in a coarse and imperfect mirror. Sawest thou ever thy friend asleep? Wert thou not dismayed at thy friend looking so? O oh my friend, man is some thing that hath to be surpassed. In divining and keeping silence shall the friend be a master. Not everything must thou wish to see. Thy dream shall disclose unto thee what thy friend doth when awake. Let thy pity be a divining, to know first at thy freno. The friend. 59. Wanteth pity, perhaps he loveth in thee the unmoved eye, and the look of eternity. Let thy pity for thy friend be hid under a hard shell, thou shalt bite out a tooth upon it. Thus will it have delicacy and sweetness. Art thou pure air and solitude and bread and medicine to thy friend? Many a one cannot loosen his own fetters, but is nevertheless his friend as emancipator. Art thou a slave? Then thou canst not be a friend. Art tnou a tyrant? Then thou canst not have friends. 
Far too long hath there been a slave and a tyrant concealed in woman. On that account woman is not yet capable of friendship, she knoweth only love. In woman's love there is injustice and blindness to all she doth not love. And even in woman's conscious love, there is still always surprise and lightning and night, along with the light. As yet woman is not capable of friendship, women are still cats and birds, or at the best, cows. As yet woman is not capable of friendship, but tell me, ye men, who of you is capable of friendship? Oh, your poverty, ye men, and your sordidness of soul. As much as ye give to your friend, will I give even to my foe, will not have become poorer thereby. There is comradeship. May there be friendship. Thus spake Zarathustra. 60. And am. L.T. Obert. Thus spake Zarathustra. J. The Thousand and One Goals. Many lands saw Zarathustra, and many peoples, thus he dis. The good and bad of many peoples. No greater power. And am. L.T. Lid. Zarathustra find on earth than good and bad. No people could live without FRST valuing. If a people will maintain itself, however, it must not value as its neighbor value. Much that passed for good with one people was regarded with scorn and contempt by another, thus I found it. Much found I here called bad, which was there decked with purple honors. Never did the one neighbor understand the other. Ever did his soul marvel at his neighbor's delusion and wickedness. A table of excellencies hangeth over every people. Lo, it is the table of their triumphs. Lo, it is the voice of their will to power. It is laudable, what they think hard. What is indispensable and hard they call good. And what really beth in the direst distress, the unique and hardest of all, they extol is holy. Whatever maketh them rule and conquer and shine, to the dismay and envy of their neighbors, they regard as the high and foremost thing, the test and the meaning of all else. Verily, my brother, if thou knewest but a people's need, its land, its sky, and its neighbor, then wouldst thou divine the law of its surroundings, and why it climbeth up that ladder to its hope. And quoth, always shalt thou be the foremost and prominent above others. No one shall thy jealous soul love, except a friend and quoth. The Thousand and One Goals 6L that made the soul of a Greek thrill. Thereby went he his way. And quot. Two. To greatness. Speak truth, and be skillful with bow and arrow and quot. So seemed it alike pleasing and hard to the people from whom cometh my name the name which is alike pleasing and hard to me. Honor father and mother, and from the root of the sui, and quot. 2. To do their will and quot. And quot. 2. This table of surmounting hung another people over them, and became powerful and permanent thereby. Have fidelity, and for the sake of fidelity to risk honor and blood, even in evil and dangerous courses and quot teaching itself so, another people mastered itself, and thus mastering itself, became pregnant and heavy with great hopes. Verily, men have given unto themselves all their good and bad. Verily, they took it not, they found it not, it came not unto them as a voice from heaven. 
Values did man only assign to things in order to maintain himself he created only the significance of things, a human significance. Therefore, calleth he himself and quad, man, and quad, that is, the valuator. Valuing is creating, hear it, ye creating ones. Valuation itself is the treasure and jewel of the valued things. Through valuation only is their value, and without valuity on the nut of existence would be hollow. Hear it, ye creating ones. Change of values that is, change of the creating ones. Always doth he destroy who hath to be a creator. Creating ones were first of all peoples, and only in late times individuals. Verily, the individual himself is still the latest creation. Peoples once hung over them tables of the good. Love which. 62. Ego. Thus spake Zarathustra. Would rule and love which would obey, created for themselves such tables. Older is the pleasure in the herd than the pleasure in the And as long as the good conscience is for the herd, the bad conscience only saith, Ego Verily, the crafty ego, the loveless one, that seeketh its advantage in the advantage of many it is not the origin of the herd, but its ruin. Loving ones, was it always, and creating ones, that created, good and bad. Fire of love bloweth in the names of all the virtues, and fire of wrath. Many lands saw Zarathustra, and many peoples. No greater power did Zarathustra find on earth than the creations of the loving ones and quad, good and quad, and in quad, bad and quad, are they called. Verily, a prodigy is this power of praising and blaming. Tell me, ye brethren, who will master it for me? Who will put a fetter upon the thousand necks of this animal? A thousand goals have there been hitherto, for a thousand peoples have there been. Only the fetter for the thousand necks is still lacking, there is lacking the one goal. As yet humanity hath not a goal. But pray tell me, my brethren, if the goal of humanity be still lacking, is there not also still lacking humanity itself? Thus spake Zarathustra. Nabal to lo be he. 16. Neighbor love. 63. Ye crowd around your neighbor, and have fine words for it but I say unto you, your neighbor love is your bad love of yourselves. Ye flee unto your neighbor from yourselves, and would fain make a virtue thereof, but I fathom your unquat, unselfishness, and quat, that thou is older than that the thou hath been conse. Created, but not yet that so man presseth nigh unto his neighbor. Do I advise you to neighbor love? Rather do I advise you to neighbor flight into furthest love. Higher than love to your neighbor is love to the furthest and future ones. Higher still than love to men, is love to things. And phantoms. The phantom that runneth on before thee, my brother, is fairer than thou. Why dost thou not give unto it thy flesh and thy bones? But thou fearest, and runnest unto thy neighbor. Ye cannot endure it with yourselves, and do not love yourselves sufficiently. So ye seek to mislead your neighbor into love, and would fain gild yourselves with his error. Would that ye could not endure it with any kind of near ones, are their neighbors, then would ye have to create your friend and his overflowing heart out of yourselves. Ye call in a witness when ye want to speak well of yourselves, 
And when ye have misled him to think well of you, why care it? Also think well of yourselves. Not only doth he lie, who speaketh contrary to his knowledge, but more so, he who speaketh contrary to his ignorance. 64. I hus spake Z-A-R-A-T-H-U-5, T-R-A. And thus speak ye of yourselves in your intercourse, and belie your neighbor with yourselves. Thus saith T-L-E fool, and quad, association with men spoilt the character, especially when one hath none. The one goeth to his neighbor because he seeketh himself, and the other because he would fain lose himself. Your bad love to yourselves maketh solitude a prison to you. The furthest ones are they who pay for your love to the near ones, and when there are but five of you together, a sixth must always die. I love not your festivals either. Too many actors found I there, and even the spectators often behaved like actors. Not the neighbor do I teach you, but the friend. Let the friend be the festival of the earth to you, and a foretaste of the Superman. I teach you the friend and his overflowing heart. But one must know how to be a sponge, if one would be loved by overflowing hearts. I teach you the friend in whom the world standeth complete, a capsule of the good, the creating friend, who hath always a complete world to bestow. And as the world unrolled itself for him, so rolleth it too. Gather again for him in rings, as the growth of good through evil, as the growth of purpose out of chance. Let the future and the furthest be the motive of thy today, in thy friend shalt thou love the Superman as thy motive. My brethren, I advise you not to neighbor love I advise for the furthest love. Thus spake Zarathustra. Dot dot, he way of the creating 165. 17. The way of the creating one. Wouldst thou ge into isolation, my brother? Wouldst thou seek the way unto thyself? Tari yet a little and hearken unto me. And quod, K. Who seeketh may easily get lost himself. All isolation is wrong and quod, so say the herd. And long didst thou belong to the herd. The voice of the herd will still echo in thee. And when thou sayest, and quot, I have no longer a conscience in common with you, and quot, then will it be a plaint and a pain. Lo, that pain itself did the same conscience produce, and the last gleam of that conscience still gloweth on thine apple of carotion. But thou wouldst go the way of thine affliction, which is the way unto thyself. Then show me thine authority and thy strength to do so. Art thou a new strength and a new authority? A first motion, a self-rolling wheel. Canst thou also compel stars to revolve around thee? Alas! There is so much lusting for loftiness. There are so many convulsions of the ambitions. Show me that thou art not a lusting and ambitious one. Alas! There are so many great thoughts that do nothing more than the bellows. They inflate, and make emptier than ever. Free! Dost thou call thyself? Thy ruling thought would I hear of, and not that thou hast escaped from a yoke. Art thou one entitled to escape from a yoke? Many a one hath cast away his final worth when he hath cast away his servitude. 66. Thus spake Zarathustra. Free from what? What did that matter to Zarathustra? Clearly, however, shall thine eye show unto me, free for what? Canst thou give unto thyself thy bad and thy good, and set up thy will as a law over thee? 
Canst thou be judge for thyself, and avenger of thy law? Terrible is aloneness with the judge and avenger of one's own law. Thus is a star projected into desert space, and into the icy breath of aloneness. Today sufferest thou still from the multitude, thou individ UAL, today hast thou still thy courage unabated, and thy hopes. But one day will the solitude weary thee, one day will thy pride yield, and thy courage quail. Thou wilt one day cry, and quad, I am alone, and quad. One day wilt thou see no longer thy loftiness, and see too closely thy lowliness, thy sublimity itself will frighten thee as a phantom. Thu wilt own day cry, and quad, all is false. And quad, there are feelings which seek to slay the lonesome one, if they do not succeed, then must they themselves die. But art thou capable of it to be a murderer? Hast thou ever known, my brother, the word and quad, disdain and quad, and the anguish of thy justice in being just to those that disdain thee? Thou forcest many to think differently about thee, that, charge they heavily to thine account. Thou earnest nigh unto them, and yet wentest past, for that they never forgive thee. Thou goest beyond them, but the higher thou risest, the smaller doth the eye of envy see thee. Most of all, however, is the flying one hated. And quad. How could ye be just unto me? And quad, must thou say and quad, I choose your injustice as my allotted portion. And quad, injustice and filth cast they at the lonesome one, but, my. The way of the creating 167. Brother, if thou wouldst be a star, thou must shine for them nonetheless on that account and be on thy guard against the good and just. They would fain crucify those who devise their own virtue they hate the lonesome ones. Fire. Be on thy guard, also, against holy simplicity. All is unholy to it that is not simple. Fain, likewise, would it play with the of the fago and stake. And be on thy guard, also, against the assaults of thy love. Too readily did the recluse reach his hand to any one who meeteth him. To many a one mayest thou not give thy hand, but only thy paw, and I wish thy paw also to have claws. But the worst enemy thou canst meet, wilt thou thyself always be, Thou waylayest thyself in caverns and forests. Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way to thyself, and past thyself and thy seven devils leadeth thy way. A heretic wilt thou be to thyself, and a wizard and a soothsayer, and a fool, and a doubter, and a reprobate, and a villain. Ready must thou be to burn thyself in thine own flame, how couldst thou become new if thou have not first become ashes? Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way of the creating one, a god wilt thou create for thyself out of thy seven devils. Thou lonesome one, thou goest the way of the loving one, thou lovest thyself, and on that account despisest thou thyself as only the loving ones despise. To create, desireth the loving one, because he despiseth. What knoweth he of love who hath not been obliged to despise just what he loved? With thy love, go into thine isolation, my brother, and with thy creating, and laid only be will justice limp after thee. 68. Thus spake Zarathustra. With my tears, go into thine isolation, my brother.
I love him who seeketh to create beyond himself, and thus succumbeth. Thus spake Zarathustra. 18. Old and young women. Why stealest thou along so furtively in the twilight, Thustra? And what hiddest thou so carefully under thy mantle? Is it a treasure that hath been given thee? Or a child that hath been born thee? Or goest thou thyself on a thief's errand, thou friend of the evil? Verily, my brother, said Zarathustra, it is a treasure that hath been given me, it is a little truth which I carry. But it is naughty, like a young child, and if I hold not its mouth, it screamed too loudly. As I went on my way alone today, at the hour when the tun declineth, there met me an old woman, and she spake thus unto my soul, and quoth, much hath Zarathustra spoken also to us women, but never spake he unto us concerning woman, and quoth, and I answered her, and quoth, concerning woman, one should only talk unto men, and quot, and quot, talk also unto me of woman, and quot, said she, and quot, I am old enough to forget it presently, and quot. And I obliged the old woman and spake thus unto her, everything in woman is a riddle, and everything in woman lieth one solution it is called pregnancy. Old and young women. 69. Man is for woman a means. The purpose is always the child. But what is woman for man? Two different things wanteth the true man. Danger and diversion. Therefore wanteth he woman, as the most danger. Asterisk. Ouse plaything. Man shall be trained for war, and woman for the recreation of the warrior all else is folly two sweet fruits these the warrior liketh not therefore liketh he woman bitter is even the sweetest woman better than man doth woman understand children but man is more childish than woman in the true man there is a child hidden it wanteth to play up then ye women and discover the child in man a plaything let woman be, pure and fine like the precious stone, illumined with the virtues of a world not yet come. Let the beam of a star shine in your love. Let your hope say, and quot, may I bear the superman, and quot, in your love let there be valor. With your love shall ye assail him who inspireth you with fear. In your love be your honor. Little doth woman understand otherwise about honor. But let this be your honor. Always to love more than ye are loved, and never bait a second. Let man fear woman when she loveth, then maketh she. Every sacrifice, and everything else she regardeth as worthless. Let man fear woman when she hateth, for man in his inner most soul is merely evil woman however is mean whom hateth woman most thus spake the iron to the lodestone and quot i hate thee most because thou attractest but art too weak to draw unto thee and quot the happiness of man is and quot i will and quot, the happiness of woman is, and quot, he will, and quot. 70. Thus spake Zarathustra, and quot, lo, now hath the world become perfect, and quot, thus thinketh every woman when she obeyeth with all her love. Obey, must the woman, and find a depth for her surface. Surface is woman's soul, a mobile, stormy film on shallow water. 
Manas Sol, however, is deep, its current gusheth in subterranean caverns, woman surmiseth its force, but comprehended it not. Then answered me the old woman, Many fine things hath Zarathustra said, especially for those who are young enough for them. Strange. Zarathustra knoweth little about woman, and yet he is right about them. Did this happen, because with women nothing is impossible? And now accept a little truth by way of thanks. I am old enough for it. Swaddle it up and hold its mouth. Otherwise it will scream too loudly, the little truth. And quat. And quat. Give me, woman, thy little truth. And quat. Said I. And thus spake the old woman. And quat. Thou goest to women. Do not forget thy whip. And quat. Thus spake Zarathustra. The bite of the adder. One day had Zarathustra fallen asleep under a fig tree, owing to the heat, with his arm over his face. And there came an adder and bit him in the neck, so that Zarathustra screamed with pain. When he had taken his arm from his face he looked. The bite of the adder. Zarathustra, and quat, as. 7 at the serpent, and then did it recognize the eyes of Zarathustra, wriggled awkwardly, and tried to get away. And Quat, not at all, said. Yet hast thou not received my thanks. Thou hast awakened me in time. My journey is yet long. And Quat, and Quat, thy journey is short. And Quat, said the adder sadly, and quat, my poison is fatal. And quat, Zarathustra smiled. And quat, when did ever a dragon die of a serpent's poison? And quat, said he. And quat, but take thy poison back. Thou art not rich enough to present it to me. And quat, then fell the adder again on his neck, and licked his wound. When Zarathustra once told this to his disciples they asked him, And quat, and what, O Zarathustra, is the moral of thy story? And quat, and Zarathustra answered them thus, The destroyer of morality, the good and just call me, my story is immoral. When, however, ye have an enemy, then return him not good for evil, for that would abash him. But prove that he hath done something good to you, and rather be angry than abash any one. And when ye are cursed, it pleaseth me not that ye should then desire to bless. Rather curse a little also. And should a great injustice befall you, then do quickly five small ones besides. Hideous to behold is he on whom injustice presseth alone. Did ye ever know this? Shared injustice is half justice. And he who can bear it, shall take the injustice upon himself. A small revenge is humaner than no revenge at all. And if the punishment be not also a right and an honor to the transgressor, I do not like your punishing. Nobler is it to own oneself in the wrong than to establish one's right, especially if one be in the right. Only, one must be rich enough to do so. I do not like your cold justice, out of the eye of your judges. J2. Thus spake Zax Athustra. Dear always glance at the executioner and his cold steel. Tell me. Where find we justice, which is love with seeing eyes? Devise me, then, the love which not only bereath all punishment, but also all guilt. Devise me, 
Then, the justice which acquitteth every one except the judge. And would ye hear this likewise? To him who seeketh to be just from the heart, even the lie becometh philanthropy. But how could I be just from the heart? How can I give every one his own? Let this be enough for me. I give unto every one mine own. Finally, my brethren, guard against doing wrong to any anchorite. How could an anchorite forget? How could he requite? Like a deep well is an anchorite. Easy is it to throw in a stone. If it should sink to the bottom, however, tell me, who will bring it out again? Guard against injuring the anchorite. If ye have done so, however, well then, kill him also. Thus spake Zarathustra. 20. Child and Marriage. I have a question for thee alone, my brother, like a sounding lead, cast I this question into thy soul, that I may know its depth. Thou art young, and desirest child and marriage. But I ask thee, art thou a man entitled to desire a child? Child and Marriage 73. Art thou the victorious one, the self-conqueror, the ruler of thy passions, the master of thy virtues? Thus do I ask thee, or did the animal speak in thy wish, and necessity, or isolation, or discord in thee? I would have thy victory and freedom long for a child. Living monuments shalt thou build to thy victory and emancipation. Beyond thyself shalt thou build. But first of all must thou be built thyself, rectangular in body and soul. Not only onward shalt thou propagate thyself, but upward. For that purpose may the garden of marriage help thee. A higher body shalt thou create, a first movement, a spontaneously rolling wheel of creating one shalt thou create. Marriage. So call I the will of the twain to create the one that is more than those who created it. The reverence for one and other, as those exercising such a will, call I marriage. Let this be the significance and the truth of thy marriage. But that which the many too many call marriage.